Hi guys, I'm Lisa from the Chocolate Carousel. Thank you for joining me on live. I'm sorry we're coming to you a couple minutes late today. Um, we're also on Instagram live, so we were just trying to get all our cameras right. So hopefully this works and you can see us both on Facebook and Instagram. So welcome, welcome to live. Um, I've been in DC for the last couple days at Wedding Wire World 2017, which is a huge convention for wedding professionals. DJs, florists, venues, uh, wedding planners, cake people, calligraphers, all kinds of wedding professionals. And it was really, really fun, really educational. We learned so many new things that we're excited to share with all of our brides and grooms and couples that come in for their cakes here. So we are here, we are ready, we're smarter than we were yesterday, and looking forward to working with you on those things. I'm still working on my uh, dessert for breakfast series. I have today's live and I have one more uh, breakfast dessert for you uh, coming up on the next live. So these are fun. These are really great ways to get your sweets in in the morning and not feel terribly guilty about it. Today's is actually really healthy. I'm doing a blueberry breakfast cake. And you know, this is Jersey. Jersey blueberries are in. They're in. Uh, they're in season right now and always try to use seasonal and fresh ingredients when you're cooking or baking because it just makes everything taste better. I had to cut the, the blueberry breakfast cake already today because when Russ got here he was a little ornery and so I felt like if I gave him a piece of cake that would really work things out for him. And I think it worked. Did it work, Russ? A little bit. A little it worked bit. a little bit. Even so yet. yes, yes. cake does make things better. <laughs> um, so follow me and let's get this recipe started. In my bowl I have a half a cup of butter and one pound of cream cheese, which I've softened to room temperature. You want to always start by creaming your butter in these recipes. So I'm going to get this onto the mixer and get this spinning, right? So get this mixing together. You have a little lock button on the side of the mixer. You should use that when things are really firm because that will keep your um, paddle down in your ingredients. You can see that coming together. I get it going slowly first just till it gets a little mix on it and then really whips it up. Hi, Erica. Oh, hello, Anna. Thank you for joining us on live today. I'm glad to see you guys here. I'm toying around with a new idea for live. I haven't even shared it with Russ yet. He loves when I share these things live. So, yeah, yeah, let me tell you about it. I'm thinking about doing an interactive live where you guys at home are making the recipe along with me. And if you're interested in something like that, then we're gonna have a sign up for it. You sign up, I'll send you the ingredient list and all the tools you'll need ahead of time, and you'll make it with me interactively. Russ likes the idea, I'm not in trouble. Well, that's one time today. Okay, so I cr I'm gonna leave this on. I creamed my butter and my cream cheese together. And to that now I'm gonna add my sugar. So in the bowl, I have one cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of granulated sugar. See them down in there? And I'm gonna add this in and get this mixed in together with the uh, cream cheese and butter. All right, so lock me up again and let that start going. Erica, you're in? I had a feeling I could count on you for this. It's going to be super fun. I'm planning it, and I'm open to suggestions. I figured we'd do a recipe one time, and then we could even do a decorating um, a decorating project. All right, so look at this. It's almost like the basis of chocolate chip cookie dough at this point, because you got the brown sugar, the sugar, the butter. But cream cheese wouldn't go with cookie dough, but it smells like cookie dough, so it reminded me of that. I'm going to give it a sh little scrape down on this at this point because I want to get it all down in the bottom of the bowl because I'm going to be adding in my vanilla and my eggs next. So while that's mixing, on a slow speed, I'm going to drop two eggs into there. I'm going to crack those first into this little bowl because I want to make sure I don't have any shells. So I will never go directly into this because if a shell gets in there, then what? I got to I gotta start over. I don't have time for starting over. So, crack your eggs into a little separate bowl like that. All right, once you get them with no shells, I'm gonna drop those in one at a time. Let one go in, let them mix. Give it a little scrape. 
This is a very thick batter. So if you're noticing that as you're working with it, it's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's a thick batter. Gonna put my other egg in. Get that mixing in. And then one teaspoon of vanilla extract to give it a little flavor. A nice big teaspoon. That's it. Okay, so now we're gonna add our flour mixture, which is going to be two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and you're gonna whisk this all together in a bowl. Okay, so you have four ingredients in here, and then they're gonna get whisked together. That's a beater, Russ. This is a whisk. Russ, man, you need a lesson on the tools of the trade. That's a bit of little beater. That's terrible. It's okay. It's all right, Russ. It's okay. I still love you. I still love you. He's cute as a button. You can't, you know, you gotta love him. It's like, you gotta. You just gotta. All right, with that, Washing. with that dry ingredients, I'm gonna use buttermilk. Now, you can buy buttermilk in the grocery store, but a lot of recipes don't call for buttermilk, so what always happens to me is I buy buttermilk, I need a little bit, and then the rest goes to waste. So this is a little trick for you to make butter, buttermilk. Hey, Linda, who's that? Oh, Lisa. Hey, Lisa, I totally agree. Come on, <laughs> Russ. Come on. You don't know how many times a day I have to say that. Um, so to, to make this buttermilk, Oops, I lost my little thing. I want to show you. You use one tablespoon of lemon juice with your milk. So I have a half a cup. Half a cup of milk, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and that is going to give me my buttermilk. And if you do that, you don't have to buy buttermilk and waste it. A little homemade buttermilk trick for you. Get that mixed together too. All right. And so now what I want to do is I want to add this flour mixture just slowly into this and alternate it with the buttermilk. So a little bit of flour, and I turn down my mixer so that I don't get a poop. Just getting that in there. I did about a third. Now, about half of this milk. Let that combine. This is all about patience. A lot of times baking is about patience. I don't consider myself an extremely patient person, which is kind of, like, <laughs> it's a little funny, it's a little ironic <laughs> to me that I am a baker um, because of that, but it's something that you just have to kind of learn and respect about the profession or the trade. All right, so get the rest of my flour in there. I went with another third because it starts to get dry. You can see it almost turns to a dough. Now you need a little bit more of this buttermilk to get it back to a batter. And so that's the process. So you're gonna just alternate between the milk and the flour till it's all in there. All right, now the rest of my flour. I hope you guys are having fun with these recipes. I, I get very excited when people come to my classes or they stop into the store or I see them in Costco or wherever and they tell me that they're watching the lives and they're making the recipes. I hope you're trying some of them and if you need any help along the way, that's what I'm here for. Just send me a message. And I'll be help, happy to help you with any problems you're having. So I'm scraping down the sides just because I want to make sure everything got in there. Just gonna give that a little mix again just to make sure everything's incorporated. Grab myself a paper towel here. This is our first time live on Instagram. This is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm learning a lot about this social media stuff from you. Come on, Russ. <laughs> All right, so that's that. So check this batter out. It's nice and thick. It's really buttery and creamy. Um, and this is where I'm gonna add my blueberries. 
So I have a cup and a half of blueberries for this recipe that I've washed and let dry. They're fresh blueberries. I don't recommend using frozen. You want to use fresh. Besides the fact that fresh blueberries are so amazing right now, um, they don't have any liquid in them, so they're nice and dry, as opposed to the frozen ones, which could be liquidy, and we'll just break this batter down. I just want to fold these in. I'm not trying to um, to beat them in, because I want to keep the blueberries whole. So I'm going to put about half in, fold them down into the batter gently. And then add the rest. Gently get those folded in. Just like that. Mmm. Blueberries are really healthy, too. Rick's watching you on Instagram. Rick! Rick, man, I'm thinking about you all day long. I'm glad you're watching. Rick's going to come on. He wants to come on. He, he's talked to me about that, so we got to get him in here. Let's do it. Yeah, we definitely got to do that. Okay. All right, so that's my batter, and I'm going to prepare my pan now. So I have a 13 by 9 inch pan. I'm going to just use a little spray grease, just a little release on this. You could use butter, too, if you want. I'm just mostly getting the edges and the corners real good, and then just give it a little hit on the bottom. I want to add some parchment paper in there. You know how I am about cleanup, guys, so I think it's so much easier to clean this up if you have parchment in the pan. So I have a piece that I cut to the size of this pan. I'll let it fold over the edges a little bit and just get that fitted into the bottom. This also helps you lift. So leaving a little bit of excess on here is a great trick. So you're not like digging in there with your spatula trying to get it out of the pan. This will help you lift it right out. It's really nice. Okay, so I have that ready. And I'm going to add this batter to the pan now. The whole thing goes in and it's real thick. So you're just going to help that in like that. Mm. You can see all those blueberries running through it. A little bit of blueberry swirl that kind of naturally made its way in there. Nice and easy. Let me grab my spatula here and I will spread that. You want to get into the corners. I always start with the corners because you know what? The corners seem to get left out a lot. People don't think about that. So go into your corners. You don't want to rip the corners off. So filling in on the corners is a great way to start and then you can come back and fill in the rest. Just kind of evenly spread it so that you're cake is going to come up nice and level. So what's great about this for breakfast is that it has the nice fresh blueberries in there which are very healthy and we're going to make a little oatmeal strudel topping for the top which also makes it very appropriate for cake for breakfast. I mean I'm a fan of any kind of cake for breakfast. Double chocolate cake for breakfast is good by me you know but if you're thinking about being healthy this is definitely a great choice. For the strudel topping, I have brown sugar, flour, and oatmeal in my bowl. Just gonna mix those together. And then I have two tablespoons of butter, which I wanna melt. I'm gonna just do that right in my microwave to make the strudel topping. Let me throw that in there. While that's going, I'll whisk this up a little. You want to get all the chunky pieces of the brown sugar out of there. Mix it up with the flour and the oats. This is oatmeal. Everybody knows oatmeal is healthy. All right. Got those mixed together. I'm going to add to this the melted butter as soon as it beeps and comes out of my microwave. And then this is going to spread across the top. Now, have a little patience again, patience again, when we're baking this. You're going to bake it at 350. It goes in for 50 minutes. You, you want it, you're going to want to eat it way before it's going to be ready to eat because it smells so good and you smell it all in the oven, but you got to let it go for a good 50 minutes. At that point, I like to check it. If the, check the center. Toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean, you're done. 
or if the center bounces back at you, you're done. If it's soft, pop it back in for another five minutes because you don't want to have just the sides cooked and the center soft, you'll be sad. So make sure you cook it all the way because this is a dense cake. It does need a fair amount of time in the oven. All right, look at how this came together. Just the butter in there makes this all kind of come together as a little strudel topping. And you're just gonna spread this evenly over the top. So dump that right down here on top of the cake. Get it all. Okay, and then just move it around so that it covers the top. It's a thin coating, but you're gonna get little bites of that sweet brown sugar and the oatmeal as you have and enjoy this cake. All right, so once you get it topped, then into the oven a good 50 minutes. Check it, hand on the top. If it bounces back, you know it's done. If that doesn't work for you or you're not sure, try a toothpick in the center. If it comes out clean, you're done. If not, pop it back in for another five minutes, check it again, and just be watching it until you get it to where you want. When it comes out, it's nice and firm, just like this one. Remember, I cut a piece for Russ earlier. Had to make Russ happy. Um, but look, you can see the blueberries inside. I have a couple pieces that I put on a plate here. I topped it with a little powdered sugar, just to looks pretty that way. All blueberries running throughout, this nice golden cake. It's buttery, it's delicious, it has a little oatmeal on there. It's dessert for breakfast. So guys, try this recipe at home. Definitely leave me some comments. I'd love to know how it's going. Questions are welcome too. I'll help you walk, walk through it if you have any difficulties along the way. I'm so excited that you guys joined me on live. I am not going to be on live next week. I'm gonna be away on Wednesday. But don't, don't worry and don't miss me too much. I'll be back the following week. I'm doing peanut butter filled chocolate muffins as the last in my dessert for breakfast series. So you gotta tune in for that. It's gonna be really good, really decadent, probably a little less healthy than this one, but you're gonna love it. Um, I have Sweet Tooth Saturday this Saturday, the 19th from four to six, all you can eat cake filling and frosting. I'm gonna have some of this blueberry cake out on the buffet for that, so if you wanna taste it, come by Sweet Tooth Saturday. You can sign up in advance on our website or sign up at the door, bring your own wine or beer. It's a really fun time. Look forward to having you all here. My next class is September 6th. It's Rustic Chic Cupcakes. There are still spots available for that. Um, I don't have anything else coming up in August because I have a private that we booked. And so remember, if you have a group of 12 or more and you want to book a private, give us a call, send us an email, send us a Facebook message, get in touch with us. We'll get you set up for your own private event. Thanks so much for joining me on live, guys. It was a pleasure. Enjoy your blueberry breakfast cake. Have a great day.